everybody. Welcome to Get Down and Dirty Talking Art. We're back. And my co-host, Calibri the Artist, is still taking a little bit of sabbatical. She'll be back in a couple of weeks. But I got two of the most fantastic guests. I'm so excited. We have... Go ahead. I'll just let you guys introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Gino Harris. I'm Amanda Koss. Yes. And I'm very excited about having them. They have an event coming up. But real fast... If you guys can put up that video that I just, or that photo about the mayor and stuff like that. Uh, I was in an event last week, which was really, really tremendous. It was at Artist Village. It was my first time there. And um, Rochelle Riley was there and a whole bunch of dignitaries. And they were opening up the alley. And you can put the other one up with Calibri and everybody, too. Uh, it was really cool. And they were talking about how the city wants to make art in every part of the city. I mean, we just want to celebrate the arts. And this is why I got these tremendous, tremendous <laughs> artists here that are gonna talk about their event that they got coming up and a little bit of history. I thought maybe we'd just start out just finding a little bit of history about you guys. Oh, okay. You know, because, you know, I know you're an artist, you're both an artist. You want to start? You can go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Well, because first. Amanda and I have a cool history. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> yes. very unique. Yes. So. <laughs> Um, so I'm an abstract expressionist. I began painting about seven years ago, six and a half years ago, um, as a release to um, get rid of, like, not get rid, but like aid in the management of depression. Mm -hmm. When my mom was diagnosed with cancer, it was really hard. And I just felt like my hands just felt empty and I felt, I didn't feel whole. And um, so I started painting in my garage using resin. And quickly I found out that I was allergic. I'd have rashes all up my oh, arms. Oh, no. And, um, you allergic to the resin? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. wow. Yeah. So it was really rough. I'd get, like, the resin cough, and it would last for a couple weeks. So I quickly figured out, you know, i got to do something else. I right. can't just quit. So I navigated into acrylic, which is something I didn't want to do to begin with. Um, I felt that it was too boring. Um but I figured out my own unique texture and color and ways um, right. within my pieces, and I really flourished. I learned a lot, and I just kind of self-taught myself. And I'm surprised really good. We, we are self-taught. Self right? yes, we are, we we are all self-taught. There's self three self-taught artists yes, here. Oh, my God. That's but the neat thing about. is about Amanda and I. Now, this is like a one in a trillion things. I get a message on Facebook. Did you live on Windsor Court in Sterling Heights? I'm going... So I messaged her. She is living in the house that my husband and I built in the same part of the basement that oh, I worked, wow. that she was working. It was my studio. It was her yeah. studio. So, I mean, the energy was there. Oh, that right. is like awesome. Yeah. so awesome. That's, That's how cool. I became friends with Amanda. And I always knew that whoever lived there before me did something because the sink, like the <laughs> sink was still there. <laughs> and it still had like all of her clay and stuff that was just like Right. You know? And then that's you found cool. the pieces outside. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. unearthed quite a few of your pieces. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what's mm -hmm. up. That's yeah. cool. And I actually that's brought a couple of them to my new house. Did you? you? Oh that. my yeah. god, you should have brought them all. Yeah. You know? Um, one broke. Oh, okay. That's and I left part of it for the new people. Yeah, and then we put the <laughs> legacy of the house on the at the ceiling of the of the, of the Oh, of the, okay. Yeah. Thanks that's to Amanda. Cool. And after yeah. she moved out it was so weird going back in there. Oh yeah. So yeah. it was just I, I always say it wasn't for chance, it was a meant to be. Experience. Yeah, most things are. It, everything yeah, always so. is. Yeah. So it's like, so you've been painting six years, six seven and years? Half. Yeah. And that's now it. your new studio is where? I'm in Dearborn, over at Dearborn Art Space. Yeah, that's so cool. Oh, yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool, yeah, cool. yeah. So, okay, Jazz, go for it. Uh, let's see. Hmm. I started back uh, painting in 03. Uh, I was working at the DIA. Um, How long ago? 20 years. Okay. 20 years. What did you do at the DIA? I worked in the contemporary art department. Oh, I was fun. an assistant. Um, and, you know, I was bombarded with a lot of art. Now, where I thought I was going to be, my interests were into interior design. Oh. So, you know, working in the gallery, you see all this great art, especially in the contemporary art oh, department. Yeah. Um, I saw a lot of great art, and I had just moved into a loft space. And, you know, like I said, my mind was thinking that I was, you know, going to go back to school for interior design. And I'm looking at these huge walls, like, what am I going to do? And so uh, one of my favorite pastimes, I used to watch Modern Masters, and I watched this interior design show on HGTV with Christopher Lowell. Mm -hmm. And he did a treatment using the old grocery store bags. He put them in a vat of coffee, got them all stained with the coffee, put them on the wall, 
covered them and the wall looked like suede and it just blew my mind. I was like, okay, I'm about to try something like that. The only art store I knew was Blick. Yeah. So I went to Blick and looked in their, their paper section and I got some paper and I brought it home and uh, the loft where I was living was doing um, construction. So they had all this extra wood laying all around and so that was what I used as my original canvases and I just started, you know, chugging away doing the art that I was doing and um, in that year, 03 is when we had the brown out. Yes. yes and so we did. when we had the brown out, um, everybody that lived in the building, we um, brought all our barbecue grills out yep. and we came down we in front of the, the building yep. and we cooked all of our food. And at the time, uh, Coco from WJLB lived in our building as well. So she provided the comedy relief. We had the barbecue You guys had a big old party. We had a big old party. That's the way to do it. And my friend, who actually started Poor Man's Art Collective with me, he was an artist before me. And I had suggested to him, I said, well, you know, you should create a piece to commemorate this. Yeah. You know, just this, because, you know, what lends itself to Poor Man's Art Collective is the fact that it's inclusive for everybody. Right. You know, age isn't a factor, sexuality isn't a factor, color isn't a factor, whatever you look like isn't a factor. It's just that we're all artists. Right. Right. And I told him, I said, make a piece. He never did. So I did. And th- the name of the piece was called Jambalaya, Series of the Melting Pot, because I it just brought everybody together. Yep. And that was the second piece that I ever sold in the gallery. And so fast forward to, uh, you know, a year after that, um, Poor Man's Art Collective was was started because being an emerging artist, self-taught, it was kind of difficult to get in galleries, you know, right. because right. for whatever reason. Yeah. I mean, there's a whole lot of reasons. You know, I could, I could latch on to one and it, it really not give it any credit, but um, I wanted to show my work. Mm-hmm. So... I just found other people like me. We got together. We would pool our resources, find empty spaces, and do pop-ups. And really, the rest is history, to be quite honest, because we would do shows all the time, two or three a quarter, um, and give other artists the opportunity to know what it feels like to To sell your work. Sell your work, yeah. And over the years, it has morphed into, um, you know, it's like a revolving door because, Mm -hmm. you know, artists have come in, and gone on and do other things. They'll come back and show. They'll go and come mm-hmm. back and show. So it's not really a set group or amount right, of people. Right, right. It's more of an idea. Mm-hmm. Um, How'd you come up with the name Poor Man's Art I like that name. That Poor is Man's like, so and cool. And you know what? It's funny that you would say that because um, it is representative of the type of art that I do, but I felt like it had a broader meaning because right. a lot of us, were struggling, mm-hmm. we were self-taught, we were using found materials. Let me see if he'll put up some of your work. Can you put up some of Gino's work? It's the artwork that's real elongated. So I'm just, we see yeah, if we can get, um, there it is. There's one of your pieces. Oh yeah, that one, that piece is called Sometimes I Feel Blue. Okay. Um, representative sometimes, you know, being an artist, you yeah. know what I'm saying? You can be in your room and you're creating. And I don't know about everybody else, but a lot of emotions tend to come up when I'm creating. Yes. You know, and it's like, I'm thinking about some stuff and, you know, you're looking at all of your, your materials and it's just, it, it I, I consider my work to be like a mood stone. Okay. Of whatever put emotion, another piece up. whatever emotions pieces. that I'm going through yeah. or if I'm dreaming or if I've had a dream, mm-hmm. you know, other people, this one, as a matter of fact, that is, this I one, like that one. This one is representative of a dream that I had. It's so cool. Of, uh, it's called Spirits Ascending. And wow. it's about spirits going up to heaven, like in, mm-hmm. in rapture. Right. Um, now, is this acrylic? Is this, uh, what is this? All this is paper. Everything that you oh, see it's, that okay. I, I do didn't know it's all paper. paper. Yes. So that's how you got started from the seeing the paper. Mm-hmm. That is so I mean, cool. well, you know, the, the thing about it is, is that, you know, a part of the, I'm not going to say fight, but the difficulty I had, because when you say paper, they like to call it craft. It's not correct. And they not they don't wanna say that it is fine art. But the funny part about it is is that a lot of people that look at my work cannot tell it's paper until See, I, I didn't tell know them. it. I did not know it. You know, that. and it's like, Oh, you can do that with paper. So I said, I mean, you know, one of the 
the the best artist I know that work with paper, of course, is Judy Bowman. Oh, gotcha. Her work is fabulous, and I love the fact that she uses paper, and she and I have chatted. We get paper from the same place, you know. Um, and I just felt a bit of solidarity with her because she uses yeah, paper. Yeah, yeah. Um, a lot of artists that I know, Dawood Shabazz uses oh, paper. Oh, God, yes, sometimes. he does. Yeah. Uh, Reggie Singleton uses yes, paper. Yes. Um, and all of these people I'm mentioning have show with Poor Man's Art Collective. That's right. Reggie is in Poor Man's Art Collective. Dawood Shabazz is in. We're uh, in Poor our Man's. Poor Man's Art Collective. Right, exactly. Yes. So well, we'll get into that. <laughs> everybody that has been a part of it, you know, it's just, it's a big old family mm-hmm. situation. Um, but, you know, back to, you know, what you were asking me about Poor Man's Art Collective, it is what is considered the decoupage, Mm -hmm. which is loosely what I do, is what was called the poor man's art. Because, uh, you know, historically, poor people could not afford art, so they created their own. That's right. So what they would do is cut out different images Mm -hmm. and put it on different things, tables and Mm -hmm. boxes. Well, the all the decoupage. And and they decorated from that. And I just, I really thought that it was so... It was apropos because of being an emerging artist. It's like you taking whatever. Because I was running into all of these artists that were creating jewelry out of spoons. Yes. And, and you know, just, yes. and I was like, okay, Poor Man's Art Collective is just, it just rings it's true. But I say that to say, I've even had people tell me, oh, no, we can't be involved with Poor Man's Art Collective because of the word poor. Please. Oh, please. <laughs> I'm serious. Oh, please. I am so serious. I tell that story. Well, then all we the don't time. want them. And Exactly. You don't want them. Exactly. I mean, but you know, P Mac has, and we're called P Macians, by the way. Oh, my um, God. <laughs> we have flourished. That's right. I mean, so many of the artists that have been a part of it are a part of everything. There are some that are in Breakfast Club. Mm-hmm. You know, so we have, you know, we might not have the name recognition as the breakfast club right. but we've been around you know what i'm saying and it's so cool. like i said my goal and, and and the idea behind who i am as an artist is always in support of and i am an advocate for yeah. emerging and self ta- self taught artists and an ally to established artists and that's I mean, that's that who is, i am that is just the best story i yeah. absolutely yeah. love it I absolutely love it. So how long have you been doing this? You said 20? 20 years in 03. That's when I started mm-hmm. trying to be an artist. I mean, my life, I thought I was going to be in music. I thought it was going to be interior designer, but life had different plans. Right. And it just, art came my way, and one thing led to another, and I'm doing art shows, and we're on TV, and it's just, we're reaching all these artists, and I even taught art to kids. That's so fun. Um, it was just like, art took me places, you know, and I'm like, wow, I've never, never thought in a million years, and how we are where we are right now yes. is because of Dawood. Dawood had a show at the Gallery at Brewery Park, and, you know, I was on the search for a space, and I talked to him. And he said, well, you know, I'm here and blah, 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 blah. And Amanda Koss. And I said, okay. And Scott had mentioned your name, too. So I called Scott. He said, well, I'm going to meet you guys up. And we chatted. And the next thing you know, and I had to warn her. I said, my energy, I'm high energy. <laughs> <laughs> I am high, I am high energy. Because Amanda knows I am, too. And right. I've been, you know, maybe I'm like but she's so here. chill. She's so she's chill. She's so cool. And yeah. she, 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 she levels Sometimes you out. Sometimes she can bring you down. She levels it's like, you out. Okay, you know? Like you need to be leveled out. But, um, That's a compliment. Thank you. It, no, I'm you honest. You are. I'm honest like engine that. because yes. I'm so... My energy is so static, you know, when you're thinking about all these million oh, different things. I know, and I, and I said my fireworks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're, you know? dealing, yeah. With, yeah. you're yeah. dealing with, you know, different artists. You know, as a matter of fact, I will say Reggie Singleton's energy matches Amanda's. They're the same. They guy. are. They're they calming. Are. They're they very are. calming because Reggie will look at me and he'll say, okay, Gino, calm down. <laughs> I love Chill that. Out. <laughs> Chill out, bro. That's how he'll say it. And I'm like, because he'll see me, I'm bouncing around, you know, doing all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. But I like that, though. That's, yeah. you know, because I want artists to get their just due. That's right. You know, We're going to take and, a real fast break. It's okay, cool. You're here at WJZZ Cool Jazz TV. Get down and dirty talking art. You can watch us on Facebook Live. Um, 
YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and everything. And I have two of my most amazing guests. Yes, we took a little hiatus for the month of July, but we're back. And we're going to be talking about the event they got coming up, which I'm really excited because we're all going to be involved in it and oh, stuff yeah. like that. So Reggie's finishing up his story. But remember, WJZZ, Cool Jazz TV, get down and dirty, talking art. And this is why art. <laughs> all right. All right. So go ahead. Um. So... We're going to talk about the show coming We can up. talk about the show. Um, Do you yeah. want to put some of the photos up from the show? I don't know if he can, I even try to get the video. I don't oh, think that he would have been so I don't know good. If I, I said it to him. I don't know if he's going to get it. Oh, wow, so just throw some good. pictures out yeah. there, whatever you guys can pull. Um, well, last year, and I, were you, no, I don't think you got a chance to be a part of the show we did at Liberal Arts. No, I didn't. Um, where I did the double. Oh, here we go. Okay. This is your oh, that's solo. my solo okay, show. Okay, we can talk about that real oh, fast. Okay, well, yeah, my solo show it. opens... On the 13th, that's actually next week, Saturday, at the congregation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's 10 years uh, to the year that I've had a solo exhibition. I did a solo exhibition 10 years ago at the Heidelberg Project really? for the Emerging Artists Program. Right. That um, is the coolest place, the, the, uh, the congregation. Well, the congregation, oh my God. It's so it's, cool. If you guys haven't been there, you have to go. It's on what? What street uh, is it on? Um, Rose Parks Boulevard and, off of Claremont. And Claremont. It is a gotta go place. Even yes, on Thursday nights or something, they got music there. Yeah, they dances, have everything. They got food, food and food. And, and, uh, it's it's, it, just it's so a cool. great space. But um, Colors, Concepts, and Contradictions is the name of my solo exhibition, which was actually the same name of my show at the Heidelberg Project. Oh I God. just thought it was apropos because it, when it hit me, I was like, wow, 10 years That's, to the year. Wow. You know? And you know, and it's only because I have been so busy promoting other artists. And I will say the one good thing that came out of the pandemic is that it forced me to think about myself mm -hmm. creatively. Mm -hmm. Because I'm, like I said, I'm in service to everybody else as artists right. that I really, you know, I was always creating art for myself, but it wasn't, I didn't have laser focus on that. Yeah, and pandemic hard. changed that. Yeah, completely changed that because I sat down. Stylistically, I changed during the pandemic, and and everybody who knows me as an artist has said my work has changed, and it was it was changing, but that pandemic just forced. Um, I think a lot of people. I think did you find that your art changed during the pandemic? Oh my, yes. certainly did. Yeah, yeah. certainly, yeah. certainly did. I um. I think we all thought outside the box now. Yeah. 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 yeah and it's funny, sure. and it's funny you would even make that comment is because when I did the show at the Heidelberg Project, uh, the director over that program, you know, she said to me, um, your work is great. I love it. But. But that but. And you're going, oh, and God, I, now and, what? And I, I got tense. I uh -huh. got tense in my body because I felt like, okay, here she, she's coming. She's coming out swinging. But she was like, step outside of your comfort zone. Ooh. Do something. See what you can do. Because here I'm thinking, I'm working in paper. Mm -hmm. All of my artist friends paint with acrylic and oils mm -hmm. and things mm -hmm. like that. I'm different already, so how dare you tell me Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. But so what did you do different? I, and I'm about to tell you. I love I it. I did, I added textural elements to this particular piece that I did. I, I went outside, I found leaves, I, I got, um, what is that stuff called, uh, paper mache, mm -hmm. and I built up the art piece, and I will tell you something. I was so nervous about the piece, because the, the, the name of the piece was called Powerful Woman, and I used leaves and all uh, so cool. tiles um, th that you put on the backsplash for yeah. the kitchen and stuff like that. And, you know, I was so nervous to put it out there. Um, and when I was sealing it, I was using polyurethane to seal it up and stuff like that in my garage. And two days before it was due for installation, it <laughs> rained. Oh, no. Oh, God. And, you know, while it was in the garage, it was fine. But, see, my garage door is, it retracts and whatever. So, you know how the doors have the cracks, right? Yes. So, as I'm lifting it up the water from the cracks came down now i was completely mortified i really was You're thinking, oh, but God. the director came i was crying on the phone I, and she came over and she looked at it she said well what's wrong with it and i'm looking at her because the water what the water did what did it do it gave it 
the stains. Oh, okay. That's and it, cool. It, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yes. It gave it it gave it the stains that didn't damage it like I thought it had done. It just and all it made me do was just tweak a few things and that piece uh, Tyree Guyton's wife ended up buying it. And Dude, it's, it's such an honor. Yeah. Oh yeah. my God, Tyree Guyton. And as a matter of fact, the last photo that she took before she took the job to go to Boston, right, when right. she was standing in front of that. Piece. Oh my God, you yeah. gotta be just yeah. like so excited. And I was, and you know, like I said, my artistically, creatively, you know, I've had some experiences that you know a lot of people. It takes years for them to to have access to, you know. Right. Right. Um, right. But you know, like I said, fast forward to the solo show but i think what i'm proudest of right now in my life is this group show mm -hmm. it, it always amazes me the 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 artists that i reach if you guys want to put up that flyer from the other show you guys can put that up and we can talk about that there it is when i tell you I, and I have to accredit Amanda because, you know, she was like, okay, well, whatever you come up with, you yeah. know, yeah. don't say that to me. That's right, <laughs> because I'm going to do it. My know? mind gets and to how many it. artists is in the show? Do you say? We have 50. So you guys hear that? 50 I want to say, isn't for... this like 47, 50, something? Honestly, I haven't counted. I know we have about 70 pieces. Yeah, set it all the no, bags. No, yeah, no. yeah, yeah. So it's at Brewery Park. Brewery and it's, Park. It's, you might 11, tell them where it is. Yeah. It's at the gallery at Brewery Park, which is in the atrium of the Crane Building. Um, you know, usually people feel that it's a gated community and it's not open to the public, but it, it is. It is. Just um, go to they, the gate and yep. tell them what you're going there for. Stand here for the art. They yep. say, okay, proceed to the big building in the back, the only tall building. And um, it's open Monday through Friday, yep. 9 to 6. Yep. I am. And what is the opening? The opening is this Friday from 5 to 7. You hear that? I want everybody to be there. Um, yep. 1155 Gratiot Avenue, right next to Eastern Market. It's beautiful. And uh, when I have to tell you, we have. That was the old uh, Strosbury yeah. place that so everybody knows. Um, we have uh, the 2022 Kresge Eminent Artist, Oliyama Dabbles has an installation called Key to Life. Uh -huh. uh, we have some of the, you know, well-known artists, Darren Darby, mm -hmm. uh, Isaiah Ford, Reggie Singleton, Priscilla Pfeiffer, um, Dawn Stringer. We got us. Uh, Amanda Cobbs, <laughs> Debbie LaPratt. Um, got some really but, great artists. But the dynamic of the show, what I'm really proud of is the fact that I'm, I'm able to put established artists like ourselves with emerging artists. And I think that's so good for the and emerging artists to know. that is key yeah. because they, that giving them that glimpse of what it is like to be in an exhibition, and I mean a real yes. exhibition, yes. where mm -hmm. they get to see their art on the wall with a tag, properly done, you know, you have the event where you're actually going to, so you can learn how to navigate all of that. Mm -hmm. You know, you go through the process of telling them, okay, this is what I need. I need, you know, some shows require you, I need an artist CV, a bio, a statement, this, that, and the other. They didn't know any of that stuff. Right, right, you know? right, right. You know, and some some exhibitions are more stringent about that kind of stuff than others. Um, and, and I like to do exhibitions that are not so much about themes. I'm always like I'm always about expression. I like that. Every I show, that's... every show that I will ever do mm -hmm. is always about expression because I do not believe in holding a person back from what they're trying to say that's creatively. That's right. You yeah. know, if if I okay, let's talk about the weather or let's talk about this. I mean, it just limits what you can do yes. in my mind. Right, right, right. You know, but if I tell you, show me why you're an artist in your artwork. So that means that you're going to dig somewhere deep in here to say, this is who I am as an artist. And that's the only parameter that I really give, other than, yes, it needs to be gallery ready. Mm -hmm. Put a wire on your work. That's right. Please. Put, Put a, a wire, wire on your work. <laughs> Make sure it's ready to hang. <laughs> Make, Make sure, sure it's hang. ready to hang. And I, had to, and I had to teach a few artists. I, you know, I, I did something that I said I wasn't going to do. A couple of artists, but they didn't know. They didn't know, right. And they didn't and know, because okay. I, had, I had a young lady... All she'd ever done was 
uh, little shows mm -hmm. where her art was just laying on the, on table. the table. Yeah. So she never worried about wiring it. And so when she gave it to me and I did, I flipped it over. On what? And the look on her face was like, what are you doing? I said, where's the wire? She was what? Yeah. She was like, I did not know that. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I'm not going to get mad at you. You yeah. know, but this is some of the things that they needed to do. Right. And so when it's I can put to learn them in a room with someone like you, mm -hmm. someone like you, and they can have conversations, they can learn things. Yes, they can. Because everybody doesn't learn the same way. Nope. A lot of people are not open. When you stand in, 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 in a role of authority, it's not received well all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, you can't talk, especially especially if you have an artist who has been creating, and they know their way. Yeah. You cannot just come up to them and say anything any kind of way. Oh, no. Yeah. So that is why the whole environment, I try to create that family I dynamic, like that. the fun in, in doing art. That way, we can shoot the breeze, we can That's exchange right. phone numbers, and opportunities arise. That's right. You know, I was in my first ever art auction years ago, back in, the, what, it was 05, um, one of my very dear friends, I don't even know where he's at, but he's an artist. His name is Jack Johnson. You hear that, Jack Johnson? He's looking for it. And when I tell you, this guy, he, he, he's such a great artist. Reggie will tell you about him. Jack Johnson, coolest artist on the planet. Make these ginormous pieces, but he was selling for $25. What? Because he just... Didn't he, know. He would, no, no, it's not that he didn't know. He knew, but he was one of those people about pushing the idea of being creative. Oh, he was okay. just straight creative. Mm -hmm. I mean, because he made work so much, he was selling all the time. Right. That was his thing, right. you know. But he he was like, you know, come on. I'm going to get you out of your, your head. You're going to be in this auction with me. Very first, I, I, I was completely terrified. I was like, well, what is this? You know, you're going to stand here and listen to people bid on your work. And what if they don't bid? They That's bid it. That's cool. They yeah. bid it. That's cool. But it was an experience. And I would not have ever had that experience had I not allowed myself to be in the same room or same situation as this artist. Mm -hmm. And so that's something that stuck with me. And it just, that that is what the role of Poor Man's Art Collective is to do. I love it. Is, is to allow that, that sense of family, the solidarity amongst artists. So when I do certain things, then I can say, hey, I need you to come and mm -hmm. do this. And all of the artists that I've ever worked with, when I call on them, they're there. Mm -hmm. And this is evident of it. You know oh, what yeah. I'm saying? When it I walked the... in there, how many people were coming to help me hang? I thought right. that was so cool. And that's see, amazing. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's so what I'm cool. saying. Yeah. I love that whole dynamic about it. Yeah. It's like here. I said, we're a family. Yeah. yeah. We're a family and we're all there to help each yeah. other. Yeah. You yeah. know, I'm not there to be any competition or anything like that. I could not know? have done any of it without Amanda. She was, oh, God. She's just the best. She's the best. Thank you. She is the best. She's the best. It really is an honor. And I actually kind of look up, not kind of, I do look up to you. I love who you are as a person, and I love your mission and how yes. you know you have this heart that's not like you'll help someone in a heart in a heartbeat, right. you know. Yeah. And right. um, it really does take a strong person who knows himself very well mm -hmm. to do that for others. Yeah, I yeah. mean, uh, really I don't know. Cool. You know, yeah. I'm not gonna try to get too sentimental because I'll cry at the the drop of the head. I love so, that. No, we'll no, all be no, crying. No, we'll no, all be crying. Because everybody I know will talk about me to death. But no, I, I, the sense of family is what it's all That's about. That's exactly what I said. It's you know, a family. It takes a, and I, a and I and I and I'll say it to the cows come home. Yeah. A lot of it I could not do without my homeboy Reggie Singleton. Oh, he's he so is. Bright. He's so level. He is a dynamic, dynamic artist. Oh my God! Oh, I, I can't wait for you guys work. to see his new work. I oh. can't, yeah. wait. I can't oh. wait. I can't wait. I just learned the other day that he lives down the street from me. Oh wow! Like a mile away. Does he really? Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. So I'm gonna his have to go work. Over to his house for a barbecue. Just invite yeah, myself over. Yeah, yeah. See, we, we have. See, <laughs> he and I that. have a history. We did a show, uh, some who years ago. Seems like forever ago, in Southwest Detroit, and I didn't know him. Um, but I, I lucked up getting into this show, and, you know, Reggie does different variations. He does the ink drawings, collage, mm -hmm. the wood sculpting. And in this show, he had the ink drawings. And I was just so taken back by the, the, the detail that he has in his ink drawings. And so when I was doing 
another show for Poor Man's Art Collective, I said, I got to find this guy. Got to find him. And I searched for him. And he's been a part of Poor Man's Art ever since it's so 08. Cool. So it's we've so been cool. buddies and homeboys so uh, cool. so since cool. uh, 08. And like I said, he's my right-hand guy. I couldn't do any of it without him. That's and so cool. we were pushing it. And he's shooting through the roof like a rocket. His work is fantastic. His work. I'm so proud to be, you know, with him, with the group and everything. Um, everybody, everybody that has come through. I mean, I've, I've shown with... Uh, We're going to take a real fast break oh, okay. right now. Okay. We're here watching uh, WJZZ, Cool Jazz TV. I am um, Get Down and Dirty Talking Art. You can watch us Facebook Live on YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and also Get Down and Dirty Talking Art. They'll, and please uh, like, share, comment, talk. You can call in and whatever. Uh, we'd love to have hear some anybody out there. Yeah, we took a little hiatus. And Cleavery will be back in a couple of weeks type of thing. So if she's out there, everybody say, Hi, Cleavery! Hey, we miss you. you! So, okay, we're back. If you guys want to put up some more pictures that I sent you, um, whatever is good with us. So, um... Yeah, shoot me some questions. I'm here to answer. Yeah, say, got answers. So, I always thought Poor Man's Art Collective was like a like a gallery. I didn't know that it was just... It, no. it's, it's no, we never have I ever didn't had, know that. And, and a lot of people have always thought that, right? Um, because in the beginning, we were so we were consistent with doing shows. Mm -hmm. Um, we were like I said, sometimes we would do two, maybe three shows a year, mm -hmm. so you know, with that uh consistency, right. you know, they were thinking that you know. Because the first couple of years um, in the loft building that I was, my friend, she was the manager of the building, so they had a lot of empty commercial space. Mm -hmm. So some of the commercial space, she would let me rent out for a month, and we would have really like a storefront. That is a so huge cool. Yep, that's like what I'm, I did. I'm sorry, I said, I said a <laughs> Yeah, yeah it's all right. You can swear. <laughs> um, you know, and that's how we really, really got, we broke into it, mm -hmm. you know. Um and then Red Apple Gallery came along in that building. So we were doing shows on our own, um, also as a part of Red Apple Gallery. And then everybody started breaking off, doing certain things. And then, you know, I moved away from there. And then we would just find different places to rent out. Mm -hmm. And we would just do stuff and just do shows. And um, we took a, I took a couple of What was of the years. most unusual place you guys did a show at? The most unusual. You know what? We didn't really. We did an outside event, and I cannot even think. We did an outside event. It was a part of. It was like. I can't even. You know what? It was so long ago. It's okay. Um, I just thought maybe at some place really wild and no, crazy. no, nothing wild. Everything has been pretty low key. But some of the, we were. It, it was. What is it? A community center. But the show was outside and right next door. I mean, you know, we were trying to have the outside because it was like a show vending type situation. Right. But it was like a, uh, what kind of restaurant? A fast food Chinese restaurant I that love. was right next door. It was, it was, it was terrible. Oh, it was no. absolutely terrible because it was Chinese food in the air. It, it was bad. Yeah, it yeah, was really yeah. bad, but we tried. That's a hey, you, you know, don't know what you tried, so I say. Yeah, so know, it doesn't work, you go tried, on to the next we, event. We tried some of everything, right, you know. Right, right. But for the most part, it has been in empty spaces, okay. you know, storefronts, mm -hmm. um, you know, the loft spaces and whatnot. Um, um, I would say one of the, the coolest. Yeah, what was the coolest The place? coolest place, I would say we did a show... I want to say it was in the loft because we they had in the space that we were at they had a it was a tri level loft mm. three levels and we had like twenty five artists um, three levels all art everywhere um, we had poetry we had fashion we had Love music that. my uh, one of my very dear friends God rest his soul he's passed away he was an author he did a book launch. Um, we were doing some of everything. That's you know? so cool. I, cause okay. you know my whole my whole thing is like, okay, if you're an artist, I don't care if you tap dance. You can that's tap right. Dance. That's about if that's you why. Juggle, I, that's if right. You want to juggle? Come on and juggle. That's you right. Know? That's right. Um, we would do some of 
you know, because I've, I've, I've just been, if you tell me you're an artist, prove it. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's just show what me. my mindset. So show me. Yeah. I'm yeah. gonna give you the platform. Show me what you can do. Yeah. You 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 wanna tell me, you're gonna type me an email and tell me, oh, well I'm this kind of artist and I do this. Okay, but show me. Show me. Yeah. Show me. Show me. Yeah. Here here's yeah. the floor. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Have you ever had to turn someone down? I try not to, and it's been very, 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 very rare. And if I've had to turn someone down, it's only been because of maybe space. It's not been because of, mm-hmm. because you know, work wasn't uh, you know up it to wasn't. A, yeah. I, and you know what? And and with that being said, you know, I steer clear. I'm not. You know, I have a, a love hate relationship with the idea of jurying work. I, mm-hmm. I know. Um, it's very hard. It is. I. Because for the most part, to me, in my head, jurying work is based on preference. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, and you can't get away from it. You cannot. If you say it's not based on preference, you're lying. Mm -hmm. Period. That's just my belief. Now, in in our shows, the way we do, there is, it's, it's, it's jurying, but it's very minimal, only in the sense that we say submit three pieces. Mm hmm we're going to choose one of the best. Mm-hmm. The only thing that is, a, and the only thing that makes it to where we have to turn somebody away is the space limitation. Mm-hmm. If we reach a certain number, right. then I can't go beyond that number. Right. So that's the only thing. So basically, everybody who submitted got in the show okay. because we picked one of the three. Right. You know, and for the most part, everybody's stuff, I love, if I could hang everybody's stuff on the wall, oh, I would. Oh, I know, you love it all. It's because like the cool. idea that I have learned, which is real, is that everybody has a niche where they fall on the spectrum of who will like your work. That's right. You know, how dare you sit and say, you know, you know, you, you rest on your accolades as an individual to say, well, oh, I don't think, and that might not, and whatever. Psh. For sure to all of that. That's right. You know, I'm I'm like, you know, I again, I'm in service to artists, right? And I feel like because I am an artist, that sensibility that I have as an artist, I understand mm-hmm. what it takes to sit down and create. Oh, yeah. And then that the need to show might not be something that's verbal, but it is in you to want your work to be seen. Mm-hmm. So for me, it's like, okay, I'm going to give them the opportunity to show that because yep. somewhere in the world, there's somebody that's going to love what that's you do. That's right. That's right. And those who are in what they consider to be power to say, oh, I don't like that work. I don't like that work. To hell with you. That's right. Yeah. That's what I said. You know, say. because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it is the normal people, the regular guy, Every the regular Joe person. that yeah. is going to come and buy your work. You know, because I don't stress, you know, and I may get in trouble about this, but I don't care. I don't care. Because too. I'm not in the service of chasing a collector. Mm. I agree. Now, I want my work to be in, in some collections, which it is. Yeah. But that is not the reason why I set out to do it. Thank you. Thank you. That is not Thank the you. reason why Thank I you. set out to do it. I set out to do art. Because I love beautiful things that I create with these hands. Mm-hmm. And to have it appreciated by the world is... Makes you it, feel good. It, it's, it's, it, it, right. it's a bonus. That's right. If I can end up in some collections, wonderful. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely yeah. wonderful. If I can sell, wonderful. That's right. You know, but I'm not going to... You know, how? what, what do they call a lawyer... When he's chasing somebody after they done had an accident, ambulance chaser. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm yeah. Not, no, I'm, that, no. That's not what it's about no, for me. No, you no, know what no. I'm saying. I want that person to take my piece home and, and enjoy it and love Absolutely. it and love it and enjoy it and really speaks to them. You know. Yeah, yeah. and that's I, what I think all our artwork. Yeah, is, and, and, you know? and, and, and sure. every artist, Absolutely. every artist that you know that is a true artist will really understand. But you know, and, and I'll say. That, you know, most self-taught artists, I think that is much more of an innate idea with them than it is, I'll just say other artists. I'm not, I'm right, not, I'm not right. going right. to even, even classify That's right. or anything. I it's know. just, you know, because I've, I've, 
I, I've been on the other side of it for so long that, you know, it's hard for me to, to kind of shake that off, mm -hmm. you know, because Poor Man's Our Collective always fought against the man. That's we did. Right. That's right. You know, we did things differently, right. you know. Right, right. Um, you, setting up in those, uh, you know, old spaces and cleaning them That's up so and painting cool. them and renting them for 30, I've 60 been there, days. there, done that. You know, yeah. we did it different, you know, because I felt like, you know, I don't want to silence the voice of an artist. I want to put it I out like there. I like that, silence and, the voice of an artist. I like Right, that. and your, your work is that whatever is in here mm -hmm. made real. That's right. And Can you I, guys put up that photo of everybody on the steps? I don't know if you guys oh, are. Yeah. That, that is was, just the best thing. That it's, photo was taken by artist, there it is, there it is, contributing there it is. artist Christian Davis. He is in the show. He has he has an installation in the show as well. He's a photographer. A cool he's a photo. painter. He's an award-winning filmmaker. That's so um, cool. I, I just love everybody that I'm working with. Yeah. I swear. And we all did that crazy pose. We yes. got the Scott McDuffie yes. pose. Scott McDuffie pose. Thank you, Scott I, McDuffie. Scott, if you hear it, if you're here, we did that because did of you. It just for you. And I'm um, Scott McDuffie. So you kind of can see a little bit what the brewery oh, park yeah, looks yeah, like. Yeah, yeah. You know? it's, it's a, it's a, I think it's going to be a I think wonderful, it's be a it's be magical. wonderful it's exhibit. Be the art is fantastic. I was um, talking to Priscilla Pfeiffer today when she came and brought her piece down. And she said it. She was like, it looks like everybody put on their A game for I this show. Yeah. And I was a like, wow. Game. I was like, you go, Priscilla, for saying that. She's that was, so cool. It was wonderful. Yeah. She's so cool. And, you know, it's funny because Priscilla, you know, <laughs> I went to school with Priscilla's son. We graduated from the same high school. Okay. Wow. And one of the uh, collectors, Kevin Thompson, he is a collector. He has Priscilla's work. He bought a piece from me. Yeah. He was having an event at his house. I showed up. And who do I walk into? It's Drake. And I'm like, her son, Drake Pfeiffer. And I'm looking at, we, we used to, and didn't you go to Benedictine High School? And blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, well, who are you? His mom, Priscilla. And I'm like, oh, wow, small world. Small world. <laughs> That's like Clemente and I, small right. world. Yeah. You know, and it's, right. it's just like, you know, that was one of the times when I knew I was where I was supposed to be. Absolutely. Yes, it was. When it I was knew the... that I was doing what it was I was supposed to do. When things like that, when things fall into yes. place like that. But I, I brought up Priscilla because Priscilla, um, before she was doing the kind of art she's doing now, she was doing decoupage. Mm -hmm. um, and it was so apropos that when I asked her to be a part of the show, her submission is a decoupage oh my God. submission. And it's funky cool I mean, she's a great artist she she's is a great so person I just she is her. wonderful um i'm so glad that she's a part of the show and it was like her piece is like the finishing touch in the area where she's at That's because so she's cool. over there with Dabo and uh isaiah ford is on the wall over there in the corner so it's it's great all you know everything is great i'm just happy i'm just it. happy it's Friday night, everybody. Five to seven. Five to seven. You will see Come some on, of come everything. See it. It's digital, digital art. Um, you know, acrylic painters, photography. Um, you know, digital everything. manipulation. Uh, deck see, I like that because yeah. so many people don't think that is a form of art, and it just like pisses me off. Yeah, I it's mean, like it is. Yeah, it is. Just because you're not sitting there and you're drawing, you are actually creating something. You know, it might be on the computer, but you're still creating. It's still a form uh, of creation. One of the pieces in the show was done by Michael Madigan. Oh, yes, and, I love Michael. Uh, it, it is his digital He's work. He's got great work. And his, it's phenomenal. And it is in such a great space, place. Uh, I can't wait for you guys to see it. it yeah, it's, it's just great. It's Friday night. And then if you guys can't make it, but you better make it. I'm going to make it, especially if they set up right, that Right, you got to be there. You got to uh, be yes. there. You got to see it. Okay. Come and catch it. Get you some great art. There's some great things there. And then it's open during, how long, when does the show actually, when is the show over with? How long are you guys September 2nd, right? Yep, that's how we take it down. Okay. September 2nd, yeah. So we so got the whole month of August. You better come August. in, see it. We'll be promoting it. I get down and dirty yeah, talking art. Yeah, because, you know, I'm glad that I've established a relationship with Amanda, so I'm trying to yes. say it again for next year. Yeah. You know, 
guys. Is um, that a hint? Yeah, hint, yeah, hint. Yeah, it's a hint, hint, hint. <laughs> um, Noted. Because, I mean, the space is, uh, this space is, is phenomenal. Excellent. You know, it yeah, is a great space. You walk in and you go, yeah. whoa. Yeah. yeah. Whoa. Yeah. 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 I mean, especially, you know, coming from our background, because we've had our shows in some of the tightest spaces. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh, my God. Just sweating like Where chicken are you gonna put in it? the room. You're going to put it on the ceiling? You know, you know on the floor? Hey. Yeah. You know. But and then they put the hanging system in for yep. you, which was yeah. so cool. Oh, my God. It's, it was like, I, I call it the disappearing, because you can't really see no. it. I know. There's you a couple know. spots you can, but yeah. it's beautiful. And but it, it is. Crazy. There was yeah, so yeah, many. Yeah, yeah, the guy, yeah. what's his name? That's Eric. There? Eric, he's so cool. He yeah. just loves the art. He is a blessing to the artist community. He's so He's such a nerd. Like, uh, yeah. yeah. Eric Walters. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah he's yeah. the guy that manages the the um, cranes, right? Yeah, he's just, such um, a neat guy, and it's oh, just, yeah. uh, it's, yeah. I can't wait, you know, I cannot wait. So, it's a, it's so gonna, blessed to have a, you guys it's, it's here, here talking event. about it. If you guys want to put some more pictures up, I don't know what all we got. But we're going to take a real fast break. You're watching WJZZ Cool Jazz hey, TV. Guys. Get down and dirty, talking art. Uh, uh, yeah, I got two of my Got me up there giving jazz hands. <laughs> yeah, we're doing the, oh, we're doing the Scott McDuffie hands. Yeah. You know, and we're here. And Friday night is the event. So, okay, um, I did our thing, so we're going to go talk some more. <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Also, uh, on Friday night, you have your friend who's doing the cupcakes, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. I forgot. Another form I, of art. I got to yes, talk about him. Uh, Nathaniel Muhammad. He is, he's a chef. I and that like, is a form of art. That and, is a difficult And that's form. another part of, yes. the, part of what Poor Man's Art Collective does, too. Because it's culinary art, mm-hmm. um, and he is going to be providing um, gourmet cupcakes, oh. uh, and they are for sale. They're not free. I'm just saying. So you guys, come with some money. Make big. sure you send them because they're big. Yeah. You know, and he's doing gourmet for you guys. Oh. So, you know, you guys come get with a little some money. Wine, get a little wine. Get a little, little cupcake. Get a little cupcake. Buy some free. art and chill out the and talk to the artist. The wine is The cupcakes <laughs> cost. The art cost. It's buy right. the art. Drink Meet some wine so you can forget about how much you pay for the art. <laughs> that's right. You know, that's right. You know that's how right. it works. That's right. That's right. Um, but yeah, it's um, it's it's everything. Um, we used to, um, you know, some shows we would do. We used to do this thing, which I'm thinking about bringing back. We used to do a thing called Poets Club, mm. um, and it was specifically uh, geared toward poetry. the poetry community. Because mm-hmm. um, that is we another would, we really. Would, and we would set it up like the Cotton Club in the sense that, you know, it would be one of the ancillary days during the course of the, the show's run. And we would have a whole night just completely dedicated to poetry. The poets would come. It's so cool. I would have a, a, a well-known poet run the event. Um, uh, my partner that started Poor Man's Art Collective with me, he was a poet, so he usually ran that. Mm-hmm. And it was just the coolest thing. We had tables set up like a nightclub. And That's so they cool. were just, uh, and I've been really thinking hard that about. That would be very um, cool. Um, I I have some people who I want, I really want to talk to about it, um, you know, bringing it back to the forefront because I think all of that in combination with everything, visual art, spoken mm-hmm. word, everything. music, everything. Um, it's so. When I was uh, yep. managing the gallery at um, the Car Center, one of our shows incorporated fashion, mm-hmm. so we had a fashion show. And that's another thing that Nathaniel, I think that he so had cool. a, he has a group called Brothers in Motion, and they're an art group just like uh, Poor Man's Art Collective, and they had the fashion and the poetry. So we're all because Dawood used to be with Brothers in Motion. I didn't know that. And Nathaniel was the founder of Brothers in Motion. Mm-hmm. So Nathaniel has art in the show. Mm-hmm. He's doing the food in the show. Dawood is in the show. Oh yeah. So you know it's like. It's all connected. Somebody yeah. always, somebody said to me, she, he was like, Gino, you don't burn bridges, do you? Mm-hmm. I was like, no. No. Why? Why? Yeah. There's no I reason said, to. everybody right. that has come into my life as an artist or a creative, I cherish that relationship that I have with you. I, I mean, you know, just unless you decide you just don't want to be bothered with me, whatever. Yeah. It is what it is. But for the most part, I can reach out to just about everybody who I've ever dealt with on a creative level and say, hey, let's do this. Mm-hmm. Let's, 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 let's do That's a show. That's what I said. It takes a community. And it yeah. does. It, does it absolutely does. It's a community. Does to, it's support to, the community. It's, it's, again, and it's, oh, it's so much. Yeah. It's never, and I think what makes it work for me is that, especially in the sense of the group sense, that it's not about me. That's right. 
it is not about I can disappear into the woodwork when when the when the engine starts to run and the show starts to happen I'll only step into the forefront when it's time to say a few words blah 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 but other than that I'm pushing you want the, the artist, artist to be front I'm front pushing front. them yep. to the front do yep. do your do thing. thing do your thing you know yeah. what I'm saying this is for you that's right you know what I'm saying because trust and believe I'm going to be hovering over my art piece trying to try to hold on my stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, what do you like? You like this? But it's already sold. (laughs) Oh, is it already sold? It's already sold. Oh my god. No, not mine. Not mine. That was Reggie's piece that sold. (gasps) Oh, really? Yeah. Reggie sold this piece. No, 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 no. You know, no. That's all right. That's all cool. That's my partner. Yeah. When you said that. That was that's his piece that sold, not that's mine. I wish so mine did cool. sell, but I don't know that's why. So cool. Real fast, I'm just gonna tell everybody, Poor Man's Art Collection is Friday. Yes. And also the Belle Isle Art Fair is Saturday and Sunday. Right. And I want you guys to come out and see me and a couple other artists. I know Reggie's there and a couple other people yeah, will yeah, be there. Yeah. I, I think um I think Somebody Marta's gonna be there. Marta is there. Marta's there, I'm there, Reggie, I think. I is think there. She, isn't Charlene Erzy in it too? She's always there. Yeah, yeah. She's always um, there. So we're right around the fountain. It's Saturday and Sunday. So you got three things. Friday night, you better be at Reggie's. Saturday or Sunday, you better be at Belle Isle. Right. So we want to see all you guys. We and then see next week, Friday, that's my solo exhibition. Yes, you better be at the... At the um, please come. Yes. Please and please get come. some coffee or some drinks. And right. just, it's such a cool place. Yeah, I love it, it there. It's so wonderful. You know, it's like this... this place where you just kind of hang out. And it's just funky. It's, it's really funky. funky. It's yeah. just the energy. Uh, shout out to Chanel Beebe. She oh, is the director. Wonderful. She is the director of that program at uh, the congregation. Yes. It's um, a- and it's funny because I got turned on to that uh, by Dawood and Reggie because mm-hmm. they both had their solo exhibitions at, um, oh, and Scott too, as Scott, a matter of fact. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, you know, I mean, I just love all these, these opportunities. It seems like um, I was having a conversation with somebody, you know, saying that the creatives, I believe, mm-hmm. are the reason why it seems that Detroit is having a, 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 a resurgence. Rebirth. Yes. And it's because of the creative set. And, yeah. and I believe that wholeheartedly. I mean, because you could not say five years ago that all of the art stuff that we've been involved in was happening. Because it wasn't. No. Right. I mean, it's like every day it's. Something, something to do. New is com- yes. Yeah. Something to do, something to be a part of, somewhere to show your work. I mean, I attributed a lot of, for a visual artist's sake, uh, Breakfast Club had a lot to do with it. They do. You know, yeah, do. Um, because they keep you abreast of everything. They put a lot of things to the forefront. Um, you know, and that whole dynamic that the Breakfast Club that has going on is, 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 is a unique phenomenon. It is. To say the least, it's it's that whole community of artists yeah. that you would have never yeah. ever ever been able yeah. to meet and be yeah. a part of. And, and see, just, yeah. uh, and I and I think that the Breakfast Club is 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 it puts you in line with collectors. Yes, yeah. it does. Um, it it really does. And and again, I'm not, and I don't speak against collectors no. or anything because. You know, but it I'm also in a shares other coll- events that's coming up. Yeah. Right, and it shares that. You know, I'm in a couple of collections. Um, you know, people have gone with uh, Breakfast Club. Um, it, it serves the purpose of bringing artists together and putting them in contact with, with collectors right and keeping, um, you know, they're teaching us about generational wealth. Yes. You know, how you can maintain that for yourself by collecting art. Um, how... They push the idea between artists to swap art, art to share oh, art. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, um, because I like you collaborating don't with another artist. And collaborating so with fun. other artists. Um, and, and, and they keep you busy because they come up with these events and... You know, sometimes you pull your hair out like, oh, God, I'm not going to meet the day. You know, <laughs> Lord, you know. What am I going to make? Yeah, right, right, what am I going to do? But it's fun. It is. When you really stop to think about it and say, you know, you're creating, it's like, oh, God, what am I going to do? What Figure show am I? But then here it is. Here it is, it pops Breakfast up. Club pops something on the screen. Yeah. Or Poor Man's Art Collectors pops something on the screen. or And there it is. You know, I'll tell you, when I when I put out the artist call for Poor Man's Art Collector, I had 25 entries in two days. I called Reggie on the phone. I was like, nobody has ever responded that fast. Usually... 
We usually wait till the day before. Yeah. That's so. That's when so true. When you say true. that, yeah. when you say that, that's, I could not believe. I called so cool. him on the phone and I said, Reggie, I cannot believe it. Already two days after, I had twenty submissions in my email. I couldn't believe it, and I'm like, you know, I was talking to Amanda and I said, well, realistically, how many pieces of art can I have? And she said, well. We probably got room for 50, but I like 30, 40, but 30 is best. <laughs> so, and I was oh, like, okay. No. And she was chopping. And I said, okay, okay. And I'm and my so you head, stretched it out. And I was yeah, at 25 know. already when we were having this conversation. I was like, no, that's not going to work. Mm-hmm. So shout out to Liberal Arts Gallery, one of my sponsors. He donated the use of all the grids. I've seen the grids. Um, That's so cool. Uh, shout out to Blackbird Gallery, uh, Paula Eatman. Mm-hmm. They're helping out with the refreshments and things like that. Um, that's so nice. Uh, and that's what it's cool is working together with these yeah, other, co- yeah, other communities, yeah, these yeah. other art events and stuff. You know, you lean so cool. on, I mean, I got my, I got my, I have to say that I got my feet wet um, curating at Liberal Arts Gallery. Mm-hmm. Um, because he allowed poor man's art. That was our home for like five years because we okay, did a okay. series I didn't know of that. shows there at Liberal Arts Gallery for about five years straight. Okay. Um, That's and, maybe why I thought that you were, okay. Yeah, and, yeah. You know, and I forgot about that. It. it just hit me right then. Yeah. But yeah, we were there stationary for a while and we were doing shows. A lot of the Poets Club was there. Um, and, you know, I helped Dwayne. His name is Dwayne Beal and he's the owner and gallerist for mm-hmm. um, Liberal Arts Gallery. Um and, you know, he supported me in my vision, you know, and I called him up and he said, what do you need? And I said, I need some grids because I have all these artists and we can only put so many things on the wall at the space. Right, right, right. And, you know, when I was hearing there, what Amanda, got the show, I, I was hearing you. Amanda tell me 30, 30, 30, yeah. and I was like, no, I got to do something else. And so I, I, I crossed my fingers. I said, can I bring some grids? And she was like, Sure. Yep. Sure, Bring them on. but it looks great though. It I can't it wait. Looks great. I He's inspiring me to try to buy more grids or buy <laughs> grids because yeah, yeah, I love that I mean, expansion. It is. It, it is. I, I love art. I, I just, I just love it what just, I do. It just, it, just, it just, when you get with the artist, you feel the energy. You yeah. feel the energy yeah. of all the artists. Yeah. When I was there, that, yeah, I'm going. Oh my God! I walked in there and I'm like, this is so. And cool. And see, you yeah. have done something different too because you put your piece. On a, on a frame. 